Hello and welcome back to uh, series two of Get My Lift, first episode. And today I am joined by Hannah, Hannah and Jennifer. <laughs> now, these girls are here to share their story and their campaign now of what they're trying to achieve in the justice system. You might remember a news article on the 10th of July that was in the papers and online um, about a young man who was convicted of raping and sexually assaulting five ladies, one of whom wishes to re remain anonymous. Um, another one who couldn't actually make it today, she was invited but couldn't make it. So these three ladies are here to share their story and how they got their conviction and how they're looking to change legislation moving forward. Yeah. So we'll start at the beginning. Yes. Um, and um, so in my mind, I'm thinking, how did you manage to do that to, as a togetherness thing? Because we're aware, or I'm aware, I can think of one case already where it was similar to yours. It was um, some sort of sexual assault. So I don't know the details of that, but it was thrown out of court because the defence lawyer was able to put a case forward of collusion. So, you know, it's from an outsider looking in, that's quite a difficult thing to do. What we you were worried done. about that. Yeah, that was yeah. our theme from the beginning and we were made aware of that yeah. um, very much early on. And we will get to that because that yeah. had a big impact on our friendship throughout. Yeah. Um, so we will get to that. But, yeah. um, right, so how did it start? How did you ascertain each other? Okay, so... Do you know what I mean? Yes, um, so I'll try without taking too long to explain how we all ended up finding each other and coming together. Um, so I was in a relationship um, with him and this was like at the very end of the relationship. I'd agreed to meet up with him. We'd broken up at this point. Um, so he'd been begging for like a month for me to give him another chance and meet up with him. So I did. Um, he was at uni university at the time in Edinburgh and I went to meet him for the day and it was a totally different person that I saw. It was like so scary and frightening, like he was just like unravelling in front of me and it was just terrifying um, and he constantly like contradicted himself. Like in one breath he would be saying like such horrible things to me um, and just being so like emotionally abusive and then in his next breath tell me he loves me, can see me walking down the aisle, like I can't leave him, he loves me. And it was just like so contradicting and confusing but what happened that day is what caused this all to start. So he attempted to strangle me um, standing by a pond like in broad daylight on this university campus and it just was so out of the blue like he told me to go look for swans so I was looking for swans there were no swans and turned round and he had me by my throat and then the only thing I said to him was like are you going to kill me and like throw me in this pond um, and it just like I'll never forget like the sheer anger in his face and his eyes when he was holding me by the throat that day and he'd never done that to me before so I was terrified um, and I think after that happened it was just like my eyes were wide open and I was like oh Hannah you need to get out of here like you need to leave him um, so he walked away he, he said nothing and gave no explanation for what he'd just done I followed him because that was the only way back to where my car was parked and I found him like sitting on a bench and then he like pulled my hair as well like totally like dragged it back and made my neck like jerk towards him and then I just said like just bluntly to him like you can't give me what I need like um, I deserve better than this like this is done so then I went to my car he wouldn't let me leave that went on for ages I finally got away and I drove to my best friend who I'll speak about later because she became a witness in this as well because she's the first person I saw so basically I got to her and I just I was in such a state of just shock I think and I just like said everything that happened from start to finish bear in mind me and her were under the impression I was meeting him that day for him to take me on a date and we'd end up back together but in reality he attempted to strangle me and pulled my hair and you did think you were getting back with him that yeah. day you thought that's I genuinely happened. thought mm -hmm. and for you Hannah your story is that was the first time he had attacked you the first time he'd physically assaulted me yeah he'd never done that before um and uh, up until that point i had no idea about what our, our relationship actually had entailed like that came out afterwards so I, I was with lauren and she basically was the one that said 
he's physically assaulted you, like we need to go to the police. Mm-hmm. And that's I, your friend, your best yeah, friend, my best friend. You told. Mm-hmm. And I laughed, like I laughed, because I was like, no, 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 you're not listening. And then I just decided to go back to the beginning again and say the whole story again. And she was like, no, Hannah, listen to me. Like he has attempted to strangle you, pulled your hair, like he's physically assaulted you, but I couldn't see it. I, I didn't, I didn't see it. Um, and I don't know why. Like looking back now, I'm like, I don't know how I couldn't see it like that, but I, I genuinely didn't. And it took a few days of Lauren and then a few other people around me saying, you need to go to the police. And I thought, oh my God, right, I think they may be right. So then I just made this decision, let's go to the police. So I went and I reported the physical assault and that's all I was there to report. But then at the end, when they, when you're given a report like that, they ask these, I think it's 10 questions that are like generic questions. And most of them I was like, no, no, like that's not, that's nothing to do with this. But then there was one question. And because of that one question is what's kind of brought this all on. Um, they asked something about when you're like asleep or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just, a memory in my head just went like ping and I told them and I just thought nothing of it really. And then I went away home and then um, my brain just started going into overdrive like, and like it was like the cotton wool was coming away from my eyes and I was like starting to really unpick the relationship and I was like, oh no, I had this awful gut feeling and I can't explain it really, it's hard to explain, but I just knew something wasn't right. I didn't know what I was looking for. Like, I honestly had no idea what I was looking for, but I knew that I needed to try and make sense of this. It was like trying to find all these pieces of a jigsaw puzzle to make sense of it. And that's how I then reached out to other people. So I was aware he had two girlfriends before me. He spoke about them a lot, called them psychos, crazy, you know, the usual stuff. So I was very aware of who they were. So I messaged so you, you knew the names I knew all of them, from... I didn't know yeah. them, I just knew them because mm-hmm. of how he spoke about them. And their them. names, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I reached out to Hannah um, and then she made me aware she was in contact with one of the other girls, the one who's staying anonymous, because um, they had kind of... We'd gone, had a bit yeah. of a friendship before, um, she'd reached out just... Asking, For the same reasons? Yeah, just kind of, maybe I think just wanting a bit, it just wasn't me. And so we just had a friendship maybe a year and a half before this mm-hmm. ever came to light. Um, so when Hannah got in contact with me, I was kind of like, oh, wow, like someone else now. So then I made a decision while I asked it. I was like, there's another girl. We should maybe just come in and chat and kind of discuss all these things because they're, they're really serious. And then that's how the group chat initially started and we were just sharing our experiences. Yeah, just the three of us, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What happened yeah. to you? Um, so I was only 14 when I met him. Um, he was my first boyfriend and I think maybe quite early on I knew something was, wasn't was right because he kind of made himself out to be this perfect human being. Like he would he'd just love bomb, like continuously. But then he would start to kind of slip and I would maybe say around about six, seven months, I kind of, I was like, this isn't right. Like, this isn't normal. But I tried so many times to leave him because I was like, I can't let this go on. Like, I physically can't. And then it would be the guilt trip. Like, well, I'm going to kill myself if you leave me. And then you feel obliged to, like, to be with them so that they don't do that to you. Um, so I kind of knew, and it took me about a year and a half to kind of realise. I was like, no, like, I really need, he's going to kill me. Like, if I don't leave, he's going to kill me. And I was 16 when I finally got away from him. Mm-hmm. Um, but it I, was a assault for you? Um, so no, mine was, um, unfortunately, mine was rape. Um, four counts mm-hmm. of rape. Um, and at the time, I knew it was wrong. And I actually confronted him after it to say, why did you just do that to me? Like, that, that was wrong. And then he would just be like, well, what are you saying I did? Like, what are you saying I did to you? Are you saying that? And then he would become the victim. He would like get mm-hmm. into a ball and like curl up like a fetus and just cry. <laughs> <laughs> and then he needed me to validate him that that was okay and then he apologised like I'll never do it again I never want to hurt you like just the gaslight and making me think oh well maybe it wasn't wrong like maybe I just interpreted that wrong but I always knew and I but again I was just so like trauma bonded to this boy mm-hmm. and I thought well he apologised he'll never do it again and it just kept on happening it was just like a consistent cycle and it's like we followed a script every single time because it just wouldn't change 
mm-hmm. and I was young and naive to think that it would but I genuinely mm-hmm. believed that it was a one time thing okay he's done it again he won't do it again mm-hmm. okay okay mm-hmm. like this is mm-hmm. the third time yeah, yeah, like, you want to same. believe him yeah like, you, you do you, because you love you just you have so much love for this yeah. person that he created at the start yeah. but that person mm-hmm. just doesn't exist like that no he made person. it up yeah. he sold yeah. you like the dream yeah and he you, did you, you thought oh my god this is like the perfect guy for me yeah. he kind of shapes himself mm-hmm. to be this person that he thinks you need and you think you want yeah. and he, yeah. he's not and the it's, right it's not him it's and not it's him. textbook trauma bond oh. i mean you've probably done all your yeah. research we know yeah. about trauma yeah. bonds in this podcast see it's not a enough people feature. know about it i know i know and a, a simple google search of mm-hmm. trauma bond and it's actually when you need it, i'm getting goosebumps because i have also been trauma bonded not in the same way mm-hmm. as you but it's the same thing mm-hmm. i'm getting goosebumps because when you read it it actually hits you in the face like a spade. Yeah, because you go, oh my god, and this you're like, is I'm an... not insane. Like, the, oh my god. But he made Aye. you yeah. feel that way. He made you feel like you were insane and you oh, were yeah. crazy forever thinking that he would be horrible to you. And like, yeah. there must be something wrong with you mm-hmm. because he was so amazing and we were so lucky that someone like him chose to be with us because he could be with anybody he wanted to be yeah, with. He yeah. was so lucky. We and then so the whole lucky. gaslighting thing, you're yeah. the one that's off your head. Yeah, like after like the attack, you'd be like, well why would you say that like I didn't do anything wrong are you saying are you saying that I just raped my girlfriend Mm -hmm. and it's just kind of like that's the moments where you start to think that you're insane Mm -hmm. and see that see the word rape and I have Mm -hmm. to say this makes my skin I don't even yeah yeah but the other thing is it's an uncomfortable word it's got a massive massive stigma Mm -hmm. attached to it and I think also there's a complete unawareness of what it actually means and what you know, it means mm-hmm. in simple terms what it means is sex that you haven't agreed to yep. yeah. it is sex doesn't matter if you've you know if there was or wasn't a fight or a beating or a strangulation or mm-hmm. what, that that's all irrelevant the bottom line is it's non-consensual sex yeah. exactly and like for all of all five of us that are involved like are, like there's so many similarities like obviously that caught like clearly shown to the police that there was a pattern of behavior yeah. which was alarming and scary however there are also such stark differences yeah. um so like it did come out like after i like when i was saying earlier how my brain was like trying to unpick it all and look back on the relationship and so many things came to light where i was like oh hannah that wasn't right like mm-hmm. So it did come to light that I had also been raped, but I really I do struggle struggle still to accept that because because of the stigma and the lack of understanding of what rape actually is. Mm-hmm. I just always picture it of this violent attack, and mm-hmm. unfortunately, and that's right, and that's part of the problem. Yeah. People, there is this delusional, yeah, yeah. you know, idea that like, that's well, he didn't what do it that is, to me. That. But and unfortunately, it's been like so horrific for me to hear the stories of the other girls because unfortunately that is their reality with him and that's been so hard for me to even picture him doing that because he didn't do that's not what it looked like for me it wasn't like that it was a it was different um it wasn't a violent attack like that he just took advantage of me in a vulnerable state of like my mental health um and just took advantage of like the certain positions I suppose we were in when Mm -hmm. engaging in a consensual sex Mm -hmm. um and that's another thing too that we have spoke about is as soon as consent is withdrawn then it's rape yeah Mm -hmm. and that's also been tricky for me to understand and get my head around because I'm like well I did agree to it but then as soon as I have then said stop or do you know I don't want to do that anymore and he kept going well that's Mm -hmm. rape do you know Mm -hmm. so I think it's been quite a it's been a hard pill to swallow yeah Jennifer, what about you? Hi. Your mum in the back. <laughs> are, you the young, are you the youngest? Yeah. yeah. 22 you are. Yeah. yeah. What what happened to you? What's your story? Tell me. So um, I met him at college. Um, mm-hmm. So I moved up to Dundee for college and within 10, 11 days, um, he was like, let's go on a wee date. So that's fine. I went for breakfast. Um, and again, I got the whole perfect image of like that I was lucky that he'd chosen me, that he was this great guy, like, tell me all I wanted to hear. Just being really, like, also aware that I was the only one in college that either hadn't been through the previous course with them or wasn't from Dundee. Mm-hmm. So he was good at, like, checking in, making sure I was okay, etc. Like, just really, really friendly. So I went on this date with him. 
and all was fine. The following night he came to my flat and that's when, you know, he raped me. Um, so I'd gone and I'd let him in. He, he was only coming to mind to pick up his hoodie or his, his board out with his friends or whatever it was. Um, so I went down and let him in and it got really violent really, really quickly. Um, he then spent the night despite, like, despite me being like, okay, like, where are your friends? What time are you going home? Like, etc, etc. But he just wasn't interested Um, sort of proceeded to do things throughout the night. But as soon as things had sort of turned sideways, I made a point of, like, pre-planting a seed that I had things to do the next day, that he would need to leave. And... Yeah, the next day he just left and I didn't ever really see him again until I identified him with the police. Because you dropped out of college. Dropped out of college, tried to go to uni the following year, couldn't do it because again that was in Dundee and then I literally fled the country. Yeah. So it's affected you. I mean, you're, you're right in what you're saying, your stories are all so yeah. different. Because I was the only one, one. In, a, in, a, in a relationship with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just like a... At what age were you when that? So, I know you were the you're probably the youngest yeah, yeah. in terms of victim yeah. age. Yeah. You were 17. seventeen at that time. And Lot was horrifying once I, I got Jennifer's name from like a mutual friend of mine and Logan's as they they were also on the college course and they told me, I think you need to contact this girl and I thought, Oh god and that this still I had this really horrible gut wrenching like feeling and so I reached out to her again, not knowing really at this time what mm -hmm. I was expecting her to say. And at first you didn't. You were like, I'm so I sorry to hear. Interested. Yeah, she was like, I'm so sorry to hear you broke but up. But you're just blacking it out. Yeah. As, and that's, all, that's what I had done for mm -hmm. the two, years. two and a bit mm -hmm. years yeah. between. But I was like, so sorry you've broken up. Yeah, I'll be and okay. I, and I was love. like, <laughs> and I was so confused because I was like, why is this guy told me to message her? And she's yeah. saying that. I was like, no, Hannah, you need to keep digging here. I was like, but also give her t a bit of time. So I did just wait and then you, I was like, well, if I said something like, if you ever want to speak to me, know I'm here and I believe you. Mm -hmm. And then you did then. Yeah. And did I was you like, kind of take the lead role in it, Hannah? Because yeah. you're the oldest out of all the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so... And the then mom. and the mum and how, <laughs> how your poor mum your poor mums and dads by the way that mm. was just what was going through yeah. my mind and we'll there get and, to that we can oh get to it that's another kettle of fish that I one. Know, I can't imagine yeah. mm -hmm. but what was horrifying well, I mean it's all horrifying but what was really horrifying and I will never forget it is when I did find Jennifer and mm -hmm. she did open up to me was how we realised how soon how fast he moves so literally what happened with her two weeks maybe later mm, not even no, a full two you're not weeks yeah weeks. one to two weeks later he was in contact with me like and that's how quick he moves it's so quick he moves, mm -hmm. he moves like and i had no idea so now looking back i'm like oh my goodness at that mm -hmm. beginning that that honeymoon phase of that when he's starting the the love bombing mm -hmm. at the beginning and i thought he was this amazing person little did i know he had just violently and brutally raped someone else literally under two weeks before like I just uh... and we were talking about this earlier like I think that's how I managed to sort of get away as quickly and as because he didn't he didn't ties. he didn't he didn't go yeah. into the gaslighting and bringing yeah. you back and the mm -hmm. trauma bond and he didn't mm -hmm. he didn't do that and now we realize it's because he already had you at the end of the tether like he so had he someone else had yeah. His next. yeah when he doesn't uh -huh. have his next person in sight he just reigns yeah, yeah reels yeah. you back in so I would say me and him broke up in August and August September we didn't fully cut contact until December, January, and he already had another person. So it's almost like he will be done with you when he's done with you, and yeah. that's that. You don't get a choice in the matter. Mm -hmm. He's done when he's done. And that exactly is it. Like, I don't know how you explain it better than that. It's like he decides. Because yeah. um, mm -hmm. so many people have come and said to us, like, why didn't you leave? Yeah, why didn't you walk away? Like and obviously that's a lack of understanding of the trauma bonding. However, I did try, like I know that I tried multiple times to break up with him and I, like I did tell him, although I didn't, I didn't, like I wasn't aware of the, of the abuse at the time, I didn't know that, I knew something wasn't right and I knew he wasn't good for like me, like my mental health, I wasn't coping with him, um, but he'd made me genuinely believe everything was my fault and it was because of my mental health that we were arguing and nothing was working. 
um, and I genuinely did believe that like by the end I thought I was crazy and I was the reason the relationship and was that's hurt. where he succeeded in gaslighting yes. and I think just about every woman you speak to on the planet and I know like I'm a lot older than you so I'll be 50 soon <laughs> oh um, my goodness you look I, amazing I, for I, have, <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, I have yet to meet a woman who doesn't have some kind of story. Now, I'm not saying every single woman has been, you know, abused, attacked, assaulted. But they do, That's they not what I'm to, saying. Yeah. But everybody, every woman on this planet that I have ever met and spoken to mm -hmm. can tell you about an experience. And I think that's the, the counter argument for the not all men. We yeah. know it's not all men. Yeah, but that's every right. single woman has a I, Everyone has so, got a story. So I, 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 have is, I have a great yeah. alliteration for this, right? <laughs> if I hand you a box of chocolate and there's a bit of poo in it, that is disguised as all the chocolate. If I give you a box of chocolates and tell you one bit's a bit of poo, you're going to be weary of all of them. Yeah. You're not going to know you which just one say one no thanks. Yeah. You just literally just be like, okay, so yeah, not all men, but which ones? Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, and also the statistics. I mean, the statistics oh, yeah. are 90 well, odd themselves. percent. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why we're here talking about it to raise awareness and share experiences. Um, and mm -hmm. we know that there are millions upon millions of women out there. And men. And yeah. I, yeah, there are yeah there are men as well. I know of one right now. Yeah. Um, but there are millions of people, women mainly, yeah, not reporting yeah. acts of maybe it's because they are in relationships. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, whatever there's so the many are, factors there are so many, of why yeah. we aren't reporting, and, and yeah. we completely understand and can relate to that. Yeah, you know, but, um, but the justice system and society's stigma doesn't. That doesn't yeah, help no, and no. that's why through your experiences and it's probably a massive part of your healing as well yeah that you're going to try like and we've kind of decided good. there has to be like a purpose for this that like we feel yeah. like we found our purpose almost yeah. of turning our pain into power like that's what we keep saying to people and that's why we just feel so strongly and passionately about trying to advocate for change because We've obviously just survived the justice system, but mm -hmm. I think we came out like crawling out of it. Yeah. 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 And, and I'm going easy. to I am going to ask you about that. But so going back to how did you yeah. get so, together then? So after he'd been violent with me that final day, I then thought, Oh, this man's not what I thought he's been. So then my brain started going and then I had recalled how previously, like during the relationship, there was something had happened between him and his friends from college um, when they used the keys for my flat that I had at uni and apparently Logan had got really violent and then they all fell out and it was so out of character and I, so I took his side at the time so I thought mm, message the friends and get the real story again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so then I did and then they said I told them what happened um, the final day I saw him and they gave me Jennifer's name and strongly advised I messaged her and I thought they were like we just think something's happened like she was in our college class and then she just never came back and I thought mm. oh god so that happened but then me and Hannah were also in contact because when I was still in the relationship <laughs> with Logan that's his name I've not said his yeah, name but so it is yeah, his name yeah. Logan yeah. Doig, yeah, 23 yes. years old yeah. he was when he got convicted um I had been on TikTok um and I ended up on like weight loss TikTok that was like on my for you page and Hannah's videos had come up, but I didn't realise it was her at the time. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. How freaky is that? And yeah. literally before the relationship had ended, I had messaged her because I've clocked who it was and I, I felt it was my anxiety. I thought, she's going to know who I am, that I'm with Logan now, and she's going to think that I'm like all her videos and like me and him are sitting laughing at her or whatever. But we wouldn't. But I, my anxiety was like, that's what I would feel if she'd done that to mm -hmm. me. So I just mm -hmm. messaged her to explain, look, I'm so sorry. I've just realised who you are. You're Logan's ex. Mm -hmm. um, I genuinely didn't realise who you were. I'm so inspired by like your videos, your transformation videos you've been putting up. Like so inspiring. Mm -hmm. And we just had like a nice wee well, chat. It was, it was really, it was a lovely little chat because I didn't actually know who Hannah was. Yeah. <laughs> so I was a bit like, oh, and then like obviously you said you were Logan's new girlfriend. I was like. This is just a really nice chat, and that was like the end of it. There was nothing yeah. further. It was just you know. So we knew all of each other, yeah. kind of, and that that's how we had connected initially. And it yeah. was just by chance. It was just totally mm -hmm. out of the blue. Oh, yeah, just TikTok for you page. And then I think, did you follow me on? I followed you on Instagram, Instagram because I got wine drunk with my friends, and I was like, by the way, Logan's ex messaged me, and she's actually so lovely. So I might go and message her, obviously. You're wine drunk. There's no worse drunk to be. <laughs> so then the next day I seen that I followed her. I was like, I am so so sorry. 
I actually just would send her nice you were. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, because I think I had told you we'd broken up. And then, yeah, that's when you told me. Yeah. Because in that, in that message, I was like, I'm really, really sorry. Hope you're all good. Like, there's no animosity here. Mm -hmm. And then... So you became talking, friends actually not knowing no, any yeah. of We hadn't disclosed anything to each other. We just... Uh, we just, we just mm -hmm. Yeah. We just actually got along really well. And then things started, like... Hannah we just started saying like up. what yeah. he was like like just oh like he's not a nice oh, person yeah, yeah. we just started like that just kind of connecting that chat, yeah, really. yeah yeah just yeah. yeah just quite without being too deep about it we didn't we didn't actually no, say anything there was nothing no. there was nothing that was this deep it was just saying oh he's just not nice yeah like, like it was on the surface yeah it was obviously. very it was very like nothing too deep just mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. Not nice. So how did you take it to the next level then? How did you then get together to decide? So basically, let's go for a... because I had initially reported him the physical assault, uh, Police Scotland were in contact with me. They were planning um, to like arrest him and speak about speak to him about that. And I was in contact with them and I said, "There's other girls. Like there's there's more than just me." And I was like, "And actually, I've got more to report now than just the physical assault." and like more's come to light I've remembered more um, and there, I have connected with other girls like this is bigger than just me um, and the police were like oh, oh god <laughs> like you know <laughs> and they were I, ju I just remember like there was a time where police Scotland were just bombarding me because that was high priority they needed these girls names and I was like like I will die on this hill I was like they are not my names to give like I can't mm -hmm. I can't do that until I get confirmation from them but I also was like, I don't want to pressure them and force them to do it if they're not ready. It was absolutely awful because I felt like I was holding like a rope and I was getting pulled two ways, do you know? I didn't know what to mm -hmm. do. Did it, you not want to report it at first? No, so for me it was what, five years, six years later maybe? Mm -hmm. when, mm -hmm. Yeah, about yeah. four or five years later. It was maybe. a long time. It was a long time and I just kind of put it in a box, put it to the back of my head, never thought about it ever again. I only ever spoke about it again with Jack, like, who's my now husband. Mm -hmm. I only ever spoke to him about it and, like, I mentioned it to my mum and sister briefly, but, like, that was done for me. I was like, I'm not ever diving back into that. So I had no intentions of ever doing it and it wasn't until I realised that it wasn't just me and it was a much bigger picture than just me that I was like, I can't consciously let this happen to another girl again like mm -hmm. knowing what I know now I cannot consciously let this continue without trying at least and that's what it was that, that yeah. changed your mind yep. what about you Jennifer I had you... no interest <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what you were going to yeah. say I, but I... what what mm. for you then changed it the fact that I knew that I needed to fill in the gaps of their the, timelines the timeline. to prove the pattern of behaviour mm -hmm. it wasn't ever anything to do with with me yeah, and even right up until the night before I testified like or went and give my evidence whatever you want to call it I was still like drop my charges mine don't matter like I'm only in this to help the other girls get, get their justice them. and that's why you yeah. did it to mm -hmm. help yeah. God. it was never about you ever, you never yeah. thought it was about you no yeah. um, I had no interest and Hannah <laughs> Hannah put in an anonymous I did um, yeah, before I want before because I really didn't want anything to do with it but I thought I'd maybe try so I put in an anonymous report wait I think that's sorry I, I think that's maybe the police message I think the police got in contact with me we've had an anonymous report you know anything about this <laughs> yeah. and I was like oh there's actually other girls I found <laughs> yeah because I, like, I was like that's what I'm doing that's yeah, all I'm doing I'm not giving my name happened. I'm not being involved in this not no um, and then you, but then you end up. But then, then I, you but then did. I did. <laughs> then mm -hmm. I did. And that's another huge factor in people not everything that you've just described. Both of you, that's a huge factor in cases not being reported mm -hmm. because there is then, and we're going to talk about that, the whole ordeal, and it is an ordeal. Oh yeah. And there's mm -hmm. no process to. No. And no, it's just so re-traumatizing. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely horrific what we've went through for yeah. the last two and a half years. Like just from well giving your report and then the long wait to giving your evidence that that in between bit nobody talks about that you've constantly mm -hmm. got a dark cloud hanging over your head and then giving your evidence that is an ordeal and then the wait between verdict and sentencing and then now after sentencing like it's just there's so much to talk about and raise awareness about that we had no clue we all walked into that absolutely blind yeah. not a clue what to expect and it is interesting how different we all felt about reporting for me it was so raw and so fresh and I just was angry I had this fire in my belly like I was terrified because I knew at that moment he was living in mixed accommodation 
and I felt he was going to kill someone. Which is where the mm -hmm. fifth girl also comes in. Yeah, the mm -hmm. fifth girl lived with him in accommodation. That's the one mm -hmm. that just didn't want to Yeah, Holly. So, that's Holly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Holly's the one that we invited that can't be yeah. here, so we can talk about Holly. Yeah. So, eventually, was it just almost like the pieces of the jigsaw uh, coming together? It wasn't, you didn't sit down and go, right, right. let's just go no. and report this and we'll be done with no. it. And no. that it slowly like that came together, together and let me tell you, when that jigsaw was finished, <laughs> it was horrifying. And <laughs> that would be a massive uh, part of your case then because mm -hmm. that would prove that it's not collusion well you would think so you would think oh. so yeah you think so give it a go. no um <laughs> yeah, so give it a go. the police absolutely believed us and trusted us mm -hmm. you know um but the police made me the person that was in assigned like in charge of our case mm -hmm. um who was amazing mm -hmm. he um let me know pretty early on like you are going to be painted by the defense as the ringleader like psycho jealous like you've got all these girls together and got them to lie and just to get revenge mm -hmm. and that absolutely terrified me I mean it made me angry but it also really scared me because I thought what if I've kind of got these girls to uncover all of this that they've had tried to bury for some of them we go through all of this and it all falls apart because the defense wins and thinks that I have been this ringleader and made it all up um, and that was a big part of because we did have a group chat which we've mentioned which we called safe space were you allowed to have that group chat the yes. police encouraged it i yeah. said to the police like mm -hmm. i have added them all into a group chat and that's where a, a safe space for us to to be, mm -hmm. feel listened to and validated it's also important to know we did not go into every single nitty gritty detail about every no. single thing in that group chat no happened. there's still things about each other's stories that we, we don't still learn. know yeah. yeah like we're still learning every day like yeah. even on the drive here we've <laughs> we've, we've uncovered, what we've covered. <laughs> yeah. yeah so like we never it's not like we wrote a statement in there to each other mm. and it wasn't like that um, and you didn't you weren't comparing stories for your own testification no. is that what it's called no but um, then sometimes things would be said and it would validate you and you'd be like oh wait actually that happened to me right. too but it mm -hmm. wasn't like we all sat down and we're like here's exactly what happened to me and every no. single nitty gritty, nitty gritty detail i'll go and say it on monday you go say yeah it, it wasn't yeah. like that no yeah. it wasn't like that. um but that's how they made it out to yeah be. did you provide your group messages still got what's that? Uh, yeah to the, so to they, the down, they took all of our phones um, yeah. and downloaded it all and what was there 7,000 7,000 7, 7, 7, oh messages God. do you know what a group chat's like aye, five aye, girls aye, pink, 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 you pink, can pink, do a thousand in a day no bother we were also so. like became friends like it wasn't just all about that yeah, yeah that's not all we spoke about yeah, yeah. Like, so at the time I would reported Logan in the December 2020 I then got engaged in the January 21 and then fell pregnant in February. Well, you're a mum as well. Yeah, We've not actually said that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was kind of like, there was other things going on for me as well. So, like, I would speak about, like, being pregnant because yeah. I was like, this is great. I want to share everything. And we did mm -hmm. we did very much overshare with those things like that. But it was mm -hmm. a genuine... I yeah, we connected in different ways. Like, yeah. obviously, the common denominator and the only reason we know each other is because of Logan. Yeah. However, it's become much more than that. Definitely. Um, and now, obviously the aftermath after sentencing like some people view it as that's the finishing point done dusted rinse your hands but for us no we're united we're standing in solidarity and now we're raising awareness and to change the justice system and that was such a massive fear for me like that sentencing was going to be done and we were all going to split ways again because yeah. mm -hmm. i depended so heavily mm -hmm. on that yeah and you still need to heal and one of you said i can't remember which one it was but one of your tweets was about you're healing and living with this for the rest of your Probably life has. and yeah yeah <laughs> that's, it's not years. it's not done you're, yeah. you know this is like just... life after abuse i feel like people don't <sighs> talk enough about that and yeah. like we've said like hannah is like an inspiration to us because she's living proof there is life after abuse mm -hmm. literally in the time it took from <laughs> reporting to the trial she got engaged had a baby got married like mm -hmm. that is incredible and do you know maybe two in october like mm -hmm. he's a wee cracker oh he is he is he is my pride and joy mm -hmm. i don't get me talk about but even that like the friendship of that like i was at like, hannah's mm -hmm. head and and the wedding and mm -hmm. um like, the gender shower, reveal and gender things reveal, yeah. that sort of thing and for me that's where this this is where it was Difference. tricky in the group chat because the police made me very aware and were trying to make me cautious of 
the friendship I formed with it. They were like, you've got to be careful. So every time Hannah invited, she invited us all to these things, I just gave excuse after excuse of why I couldn't go and it was mm -hmm. eating me alive. So then I just finally said, I need to like take a step back here. Um, and that was a really hard <laughs> time in my life, I think, because I felt like I was the one that, I suppose mm -hmm. initially started it so then I have in a way got us you all together you were maybe starting to believe the things that they were saying mm -hmm. could be said to you so then like I was trying to protect myself like and like everyone around me like my parents my family the police my my counsellor at the time they were all telling me you need to protect yourself here and um, they've all got each other you need to take a step back so I did um, and I, I obviously didn't go to any of like the big events and things so I think now that's hard because we've kind of come full circle obviously that me taking a step back didn't go very well as you can imagine mm -hmm, mm -hmm. doesn't look great do you know to the other girls and i totally get it um and i think it just it, it did make things very tricky um for a while mm -hmm. but we've managed to you know overcome that and be able to connect again and kind of put that in the past but it still mm -hmm. hurts like it's mm -hmm. still it's still you still live, feel like you're living uh, with yeah it. um and i think that'll just take time but i know that if i hadn't done that it could have looked very different yeah. Yeah. and i think now we're actually far more united than we've than ever, what, ever than been what, yeah than what we've yeah. been we don't go a day without messaging each other or facetiming or whatever i feel like would really depend on each other so much just now, especially with mm -hmm. things being so public mm -hmm. and the reception that we've had. The hate. The hate that we've had. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know, which I can't believe we'll come to that mm -hmm. as well. So see the case, um, do you want the windows down? Yeah, I was going to say it, it's a bit hot. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> see the actual case and getting a lawyer and whatever. So we don't actually have to get a lawyer. So we had no clue either. So it's basically, it's not us against Logan. It's the, the crown. crown against Logan. So like we didn't have to get, cause I panicked about that too. Like, yeah. oh, I don't know anyone. How do we, how do you afford that? Like what? Yeah. But that's not the case. So we didn't need to worry about so that it's necessarily. Victims, there's a, there's, um, Rights, is that right? And there's funding for victims. <laughs> is that right? I don't know. Does not feel? No, I know. No, we're just laughing know. at the word of victim rights. Does not feel does like you've got exist. any rights at all. It really feels the system oh, right, is right. has. I was so sick of Sorry, hearing the rights of him me. by yeah. the end. Like um, I, I was sick of hearing about that boy's rights because I felt like I'd had none and I'd I just know. been violated even more through the process. So very innocent until proven guilty for them, but very you're all liars until you're proven truthful for. Right. There. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we we didn't need to, in terms of a lawyer, no, we didn't need to worry about that or organise that. However, when it was passed over to the crown, because initially it was with the police and the officer, we did get assigned to the case. We all absolutely adore him. He was amazing. Craig was just so at that point. so trauma informed, so supportive, just human. Like he he didn't ever patronise us. He didn't ever. Mm -hmm make us feel like embarrassed like the stuff he was a good egg yeah mm -hmm. he was a good egg mm -hmm. but then when it was passed from him to the crown as it developed a bit further the case the communication do you know there was a serious lack of communication on the crown's behalf of keeping us informed of the process of the case and so even things like his preliminary hearing we had no idea until it happened that it could be moved for several several months and maybe that was just us being naive but we were never informed of that and I think it was moved up three times. And a preliminary hearing, four. just in case people don't know, is yeah. when the because mm -hmm. I wouldn't have known before no. this, is and when won't know. yeah when mm. the accused has to appear in court, they're given a date to appear in court to make their plea if they're guilty, not guilty, um, or no or, or, or um, what's that word? No plea. No, no plea. plea. And that's what he did, eh? For his, or, I think you can only do that when you're first arrested. All right. No though. plea. It was at the beginning. He, he had no comment on it all, and then. He did say not guilty the whole way through. Um, he and still he was, says not guilty. Yeah, 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 yeah. I read that. I read yeah. that. He's yeah. now in jail and still He's <laughs> still not guilty. He says and he said not guilty. It's all their fault. It's all yeah. our fault, and we're all lying still. So, yeah, I think there were so many times where he was given a preliminary hearing. Yeah. The com that wasn't communicated to us very well about what that meant and what happens there. And the date we were given, every date we were given throughout this process, the two and a half years, the goalpost shifted further and further yeah. away. It honestly felt like it was never going to end. We never like, thought that we'd actually have our have it finished. Have you had no. Time. Yeah, we never mm -hmm. thought it would be finished. Mm -hmm. And we were also so when the preliminary hearing happened, and they 
postponed it and set a further date. I remember it was on a Friday and then we were left with no communication over the oh, weekend yeah. as to how that actually went. Oh, that was the longest weekend so of we our were, lives. We were yeah. just waiting in limbo because obviously there was no communication over the weekend. So we were just left in this state of yeah. when are we going to court? If we're going to court, like has maybe pled guilty? So it was really just consistently being in a state of limbo and not knowing what you're actually doing. And I think mm. that's where the lack of communication comes in. Did you ever? throughout the two and a half years want to chuck the towel in. Oh yes, we all did. that happened at a several lot. points Many and times. God and bless our case preparer oh, because oh, she's an angel. we would not still, we wouldn't be here. No, no, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. no. And that is another thing that puts women off. Yeah, drop charges, yeah. done. Yeah, mm -hmm. cause that is, because that is, because it's torture. I was about to say it's an easy option, I don't want to say that. But in a way, I don't know how better to word Dropping it. Dropping charges is an it, easy like, option. It would have been it so much easier uh, for us uh -huh. to just be like, do you know what, this actually isn't worth it. Do you know, um, and definitely throughout it, I was you lose. I to do it the, yeah. night before, the night before court. Like you lose your, you, <laughs> you, you lose your fire with it. You lose it because mm -hmm. it's such a long process. It's not like consistently we were like gunning for it. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Absolutely not. It totally was like in waves. Um, but thank God we did all cling on until the mm. end. Like and that did, is basically what you did. You clung on, on by oh, light. Oh. <laughs> and all five of us did. Do you know? And I, I was so worried as well, getting closer. Um, <laughs> Because every time I heard like some of them were trying to drop out and things, <laughs> I was like, "Oh my God, it's going to be left. It's just me and him, and this is never going to. This has all mm -hmm. been for nothing, for mm -hmm. nothing." Um, and there was times where I thought, "Why, why are we doing this? Let's just, you know, not." But yeah, God bless our I case preparer. Prepare. She <laughs> uh, even came to court with to me support you. Yeah, yeah. as my supporter. Yeah. Yeah. You've developed a good relate, like a supportive yeah. relationship mm -hmm. there. Um, so you had each other and you're saying there was a huge lack of communication. Was yeah. there any other support at all? Therapy, counselling, anything like that? Not did you seek it provided. yourself? Yeah. yeah, you have to. It's like so most you places did. are self-referral. So the, the only um, kind of help the police gave us was recommending that we go to um, Frazac. So well, it's also Frazac. Yeah, Rape Crisis Scotland. So I'm from Fife, so it was like Fife Rape sexual assault centre for me that name makes me mm -hmm. want to vomit <laughs> but that that has been so supportive for me they have provided one-to-one -one counselling for me and I was provided an in-court supporter mm -hmm. from them who comes she's an advocacy worker she came with me to court when I was given my evidence and sat with me because it was a closed court like my mum couldn't come with me into the room so I was really thankful I had her even though when I was in the room given my evidence she didn't necessarily help me it was more so when we were released from the room and had to sit in a small tiny dusty horrible room um just having her there I think helped me so much like when I first started giving my evidence we got put out because of a legal issue they had to discuss so I was chucked into this wee room with her and I just burst into tears I just was so overwhelmed by seeing him again and just by it all and at that moment, I think if she wasn't there, I could have easily just ran out of that building and never mm. went back, do you know? Mm. Um, so I was lucky enough. I, I was supported with Frazak. Um, I was as well. Um, I had an in-court support worker as well. But So I didn't actually go into Edinburgh High Court. I was able to do a link from my local sheriff's court um, just because I have Zach, who's a young toddler, and I really <laughs> didn't fancy being away so mm. far away. Um, and so I did have an in-court support worker, but again, I had to seek that myself. I didn't actually know it existed. It was my husband that actually told me because he's a mental health nurse, mm -hmm. which is beneficial for me. Very mm -hmm. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> beneficial. So he was the one that told me about it and to maybe like go and see if I could get some help with it. So I'm still on the waiting list for a one-to-one -one counselling session. And I've been on that waiting list since February. Well, the waiting lists are awful. They're and really long and I think that just reflects how many women actually need out there support. struggling yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. and what about support for you I know you've said you've got a good relationship with, did you say you're in court no so our case preparer I know, okay. so she works for yeah. the town yeah. office yeah. and she's the one that put all the evidence together and looked through the group chat messages and, and like just put, yeah. prepared all the charges yeah. in the case together. So you got a good relationship with her Jennifer but what else for you because you're the one that just was like no I'm not going down that road again you're yeah the, I didn't I didn't access any of the, the support I just kind of 
And what was <laughs> interesting though Wrote is, that one out. did you ever get it, even now? Nah. Have, oh, nah. Yeah, we're trying. Me and Hannah are definitely trying to get her to, but it's she's just, just not there yet. Nah, it but was what was me. so interesting though was when you said recently to me oh, no. that you'd actually been given the same, like this just proves how small a world it is. Mm -hmm. She'd actually been put oh, yeah. with the same... Oh wait, that's a lie. I did try once. Yeah, with Frazak. That's true. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you want to say about why you maybe seeked uh, out with where you stay. Um, I just wasn't classic. comfortable. Um, my parents were emergency service based, mm -hmm. and at the, mm -hmm. at the first point, they weren't aware. She hadn't told her family. Mm -hmm. so, um, so no one knew, so I felt I had to go further out to avoid yeah. bumping into anyone. Or mm -hmm. It was attached to the hospital, that's where my, my dad worked. And what if you were thinking of everyone else? But yourself mm, at that yeah. point, do you know? Mm -hmm. I know. Typical. So then she was given <laughs> as an alternative, so it was further afield, not hopefully not going to be related to anyone around her. You were given Frazak, same as me. And I had no idea until just a few weeks ago when she told me. She was given the exact same counsellor as me, and it was the counsellor yeah. that put it together where we're talking about the same person, mm -hmm. the same. And mm -hmm. so she had to obviously say to Jennifer, because mm -hmm. I had been with her first. So she said to Jennifer, look, um, we can continue, but just so you know, I would have to make you both aware. And at that point, we were no longer talking because that's when I had taken a step back from mm -hmm. it all, mm -hmm. from the group chat and things. So I just dipped. So she just thought, I'm not <laughs> doing that to Hannah. I'm just not. So then after that, there was just no support. <laughs> and now I feel awful because I'm like, if I had known, I maybe would have just been like, do you know what? Just, yeah, do you know? Because mm -hmm. I did, I had Lauren, my best friend. I had my family. I had, do you know, I did have other people Whereas then I knew that you then left yourself with nothing. Um, Sorry. But you still so, it. the case was heard in Edinburgh. Yes. The conviction was Glasgow. Glasgow. It, was was <laughs> it was meant to be in Inverness. It was meant to be in It's just because it's wherever the judge that heard the case is sat. At the time. That week. So we were all right. going to have to travel to Inverness. We were ready for the road trip. We were, yeah. but thankfully <laughs> it got changed to Glasgow. Right, so it was a wee bit easier. Yeah. So what was the timeline between. Before you. Oh, oh my God. Verdict and, yeah, mm -hmm. verdict and sentence. But even the verdict. But it could have been, was it not 110 days? Uh, they could get a 110 day lie down effectively. Between verdict and sentencing. So I was picturing months, like waiting months and still. Where was he the whole time? Remanded. Yeah. Remanded. Only well, from sorry, no, no, no. Only from verdict sorry. was he remanded. Yeah, the he two and a half years. He was, so he was out. He was out on bail, but bail conditions. Hmm. Never <laughs> Did they try and get in touch with you? Uh, uh, so that's whole time that he's that you're, wondering. yeah, you sort, you sort all up and down, up and down. You know. I only lived ten minutes from him. Yeah. And I was absolutely terrified, terrified, scared. I couldn't stay in the house by myself. Um, like when I had Zach out when he was a newborn, I also had to have somebody with me because I was just absolutely terrified of running into him and just scared of Because by that point, he, he knows. Yeah, he's he, reported he, he he's knows made that accusation. He got to read our statements when he was arrested. So he would have known who it was. And obviously, he knew where my mum and dad lived. I'd moved out, but he knew where they lived. So I was just, my mind was in overdrive thinking, like, what if he harms somebody? Like, what if he harms my family? What if he tries to harm me? What if he tries to harm my, like, my baby? Mm -hmm. So I was, con I was just in a constant state of fear. Like, even throughout, like, my pregnancy, that, like, what happened also really affected me. And I just feel like he consistently has affected me throughout the whole thing. And add on top of that, he was out on bail. And I think there was 17 charges at that point he faced, yes. maybe? Something like that. I, I can't remember. It but was, it was just, yeah. it was just terrifying. And you touched on, just as we were making our way to the car, about how the whole experience impacted on your care, mm -hmm. giving birth, Yes. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> um, I had a terrible pregnancy. Um, I was really poorly throughout pregnancy, so I was always at triage and always at appointments. And if there was a man that was coming to do my exam, I just point blank refused because I was on my own a lot of the time because Jack was at work. Um, so I was like, mm -mm, no, get away. Like, can you please get send in a female? And he was like, that's fine as long as you're okay to wait. I was like, it's fine, I'll wait as long. I'm, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want a man near me. And then, so when it came to giving birth, I had to have a C-section, an emergency C-section, and it was full of men. The room was full of men, and I was having a panic attack. I was, because I was in active labour at the time as well. So I was contracting all these men around me. I honestly, I felt like I was going to pass out just with fear. 
um, obviously you're in fear because you're having an emergency C-section anyway. But I was saying to the men, I was, I was like, I'm terrified of you. Like, I'm so scared. Like, can you please leave? I was like, I can't leave. <laughs> but I was like, can you please leave? And they were like, we can't leave. Like, I'm really sorry. But I was like, please leave. And I almost felt like I was going back to like that moment when mm -hmm. I was like trying to get him off. Mm -hmm. I was like, get off mm -hmm. me, get off me. Mm -hmm. It was almost like going back to that because I couldn't leave because I obviously mm -hmm. needed help. So yeah, it's like no one was listening again. Yeah, and I just you, felt, yeah. I, I remember shouting out, I was, I was like, please leave. And like, Jack, bless, bless Jack, he was just standing we love there. Him. <laughs> he was just standing there. But like, it was just, it was a really terrifying moment, actually. Like, mm -hmm. be, realizing that you're in a room with all these men and you can't do anything about it. And it's meant to be a beautiful moment. Having your baby is meant to be the most amazing thing. And all I was worried about is all the men that could potentially take advantage of me in this and situation. And triggering you back to yeah. what you've been through. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it, was, it wasn't a good time. <laughs> so, and we'll go on to talk about, because that's it's evident that it's, that it's going to affect you for the mm -hmm. rest of your life. All of you, and that, that's a perfect example yep. of it. Going back to the court case before we then get on to the whole road ahead and all yeah. of that. Um, so the day of the actual sentencing <laughs> did you know you were going to go Always. public if oh that's what i <laughs> thought we were going to i know you knew he was you were only that was only sentencing sorry you knew you knew he was found guilty at that point mm -hmm. so after the actual sentencing mm -hmm. you knew you were going to go public after that yeah. i've known for quite a while personally that i was going to and um, just because going through the system what it was like it just didn't sit right with me like i thought oh my goodness like things need to change so i wanted to just try and use my experience to advocate for changes and just to at least try and help at least one person out there do you know if they could hear something that we've got to say because we know that abuse can look very different we're not saying our experiences is exactly what abuse is going to look like all the time but if like one person can hear something we talk about and starts to think about the relationship they're in or one that they've been in before and then that helps them to figure out or come to peace with what they've been through or give them the courage to go and report then and so many people have come to us since going public like people have reached out just writing in the com eh, the comments like telling us a bit about their story or people have privately messaged mm -hmm. us saying yeah. like we've all given them the strength and courage to now go and report so like we know that already we are which is a bit mad we know that we are helping already but well i mean we've just started you know mm -hmm. yeah i know I <laughs> <it's> <laughs> weeks. Yeah, no. the time this has been recorded it's not even two weeks since the actual sentence mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um so i know there's one girl who is or wishes are to remain anonymous and that's yes. totally fine and mm -hmm. understandable would the four of you always quite sure on the fact no jennifer yeah. no <laughs> what, what made you change your mind about well, they're girls. Yeah. It was more of a point of like, because I think you had initially tweeted about it, and then you tweeted yeah. about it, and we were in Nando's. Yeah. After session. After that, we went, went for the Nando's. Nando's. <laughs> <laughs> Quite weird, yeah. but you know, uh, we're having yeah. lunch. That's it. I was yeah, up from half past two that morning. That was like my tea time. <laughs> I we'd been sent a link. Of the it already been it released already hit the press. and we were expecting it to be the next day for it to be in the media his sentencing because yeah. the, the article no, no. that I read no. I can't remember I think I saw the article about him first do you know yeah, that I think that yeah. was what I saw first mm -hmm. then yeah. I saw your tweet and right, then I was yeah. like Oh my yeah. God, that that's so. I think that that, that made us go right now. And no, they were no. I, yeah. So I think that we were sitting in Nando's, and it just it just came, and we were all like, "Oh my God!" And then we thought, I "Right, it's now or never." I was just going to yeah. say that must have felt like uh, I can't even imagine like it was out there now. The like gut. it was just and out like there. Like it now. didn't name us, but. You knew it was you, uh -huh. it was, um, obviously. Are, yeah. it was, and then we yeah. felt we just needed our voices to be heard. So I think that's why we then, I think some of us then just felt like, yeah. like because then we did come together and create a, a blanket statement that yeah. we did I think give. for me, the only reason I was hesitant was there were still a lot of people in my life that didn't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're now yeah. five years down the line. Yeah. There were mm -hmm. still loads of people that never knew. Um, so I was like, well, I can't just go public now, like, yeah. Yeah, without know. having that conversation <laughs> first, yeah. yeah. And did you do that, Jennifer? Did you I have, used, the, before you went uh, public, did you tell your people that you were worried about? I sent them the link to the article. 
things like that. Yeah. Right. I just never... At the support from your family and friends, mm -hmm. please tell me that's all been as it should be supportive. For the ones that had told their family, yes, I would say so, yeah. 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 Um, very supportive um, and just like so sorry that we'd been through that. Um, but then it was, it has been interesting, like people in my family and friends as well have like, since I told them about it, they were saying, they would then reflect back on to when we'd, me and Logan had been with them and they'd be like, oh yeah, he just spoke over you all the time. He constantly just mm -hmm. went against everything you said. They were starting to notice stuff that they hadn't seen at the time. And I, th I thought, oh, that's interesting. So it is interesting once you do mm -hmm. start speaking about it, it's not just you that they pull the cotton wool over your eyes. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody mm -hmm. around, like mm -hmm. you My don't family see them for what they are. It makes so much sense. Cause I did drop out uni. I did move country. And at the time, no one could really understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just kind of that fell off the face just... of the earth, yeah. But it just goes to show, though, because you were saying, Hannah, it was the uni friends that conta mm -hmm. contacted you. Even they knew something's They'd, all yeah. right here. Yeah. It doesn't take, you know, Einstein to work <laughs> yeah, out when no. something's no right. But then there's also an argument there of, well, what did you do about it? Why did nobody contact her? Why are you waiting till now mm -hmm. to tell? Like, there's something in me that gets frustrated with that. Mm -hmm. I understand they maybe felt it wasn't their place or whatever, but why are we waiting now two years after I've, I've then been with him to then tell me about this other girl? Do you know, that's that's hard. And Aye. I think it's a tricky one. Mm -hmm. It's not as black and white Aye. as that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that is tricky. Like, but people really... did notice. But, but nobody did reached out. Nobody it. reached out. I always out. think, unless you've been in that situation, you, don't you, do, not, you do not have a, a position or a say. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, everybody's got their opinion, we know that. But unless you've been in that position, you cannot comment yeah. on how somebody else was dealing or feeling with it. Mm. Um, and if you've not been abused, you've no idea. Yeah. Especially when it comes to trauma bonding and gaslighting. Yeah. And the mm. other thing is, the key thing is, you're not them. You're not your abuser. You don't mm -hmm. think like that. You're a human. So mm -hmm. you're That's thinking, really I want to, you mm -hmm. got compassion, you've got care, you've got integrity. You you want that person to be a good person because all good people yeah. want yeah. their abuser to be a good person. Yeah, you don't want to believe someone's bad. People, you how do you to... explain that? Yeah. Oh, how do you explain that? Because I'm a human. Because yeah. I'm no him. Yeah. You know. I think that's how he does pull the wool over your eyes was because he just takes advantage of the fact that you are so willing to believe that he's a good person. I think that's how he manages to, I think he did that to everybody. He just managed to take our kindness almost for weakness mm -hmm. and just yeah. completely break pray, you down, yeah, like just chips away kindness. over a yeah. long period of time, do you know? Because all three of us that have been in a relationship with him, he cannot make it past the two year mark. There has this to be is, something in that. This is really the dates are very, very mm -hmm. similar of when he starts talking to you, then gets in an official relationship with you, then when the relationship comes to an end. Really so a very are... definitive cycle oh, yes. of September his behaviour. September to the point, the month. The month, the month are exactly the same. Oh. September, he oh. meets you, charms you, puts his motion in work. December, mm -hmm. the relationship is official. And then August or September, August or September, it September ends. a year and a half later, it yes. ends, and that has been the same for each of. And the I think it's because he's pushed you to your absolute breaking point. Yep. You cannot take any more, and you have mm -hmm. to get out. It's, it's just I think that's you it. You either have to get out, mm -hmm. or he will kill you. No doubt in my mind, he would have killed somebody. And I think he will one day. Like mm -hmm. I've I've said that from the start. Like since that final day, I saw him. I thought he was going to kill me. And then I thought, I need to do something here because he's going to kill someone. And I knew, as I said, he was living with girls and, oh, I was just absolutely terrified. And when that was confirmed that there had been a, a, the fifth girl like uh, that lived, uh, Holly, that lived with him, that when that was confirmed, I just thought, oh, my God, like, my gut instinct was correct. Like, mm -hmm. and for so long I had not listened to my gut because he made me believe, like, I was crazy. So I was, like, so thankful I had listened to my gut, but also it just filled me with absolute dread because I thought, oh, my God, like this is getting even bigger now, do you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank God you got your conviction. Oh. Thank God. But even the wait for the verdict. Oh, so they got yeah. sent out on the Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Verdict didn't come back till Monday at like four o'clock. Yeah. 
that was so we had that whole dreadful. weekend of knowing that they were out making a decision. For the jury sat in that whole weekend, did they sit at the weekend? No, no, no. Not so it would be the Friday and the Monday. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like we were still sat that whole weekend. Uh, yeah. No, I get it. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah so you, we, you yeah. sat for four days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were together. We were together. <laughs> mm. When we got the verdict, because mm. neither of us wanted to hear that verdict alone, because I was terrified that he'd be like not guilty yeah he'd be, he'd be acquitted and then this has all been for nothing so mm -hmm. we, were we, were, we were together using yeah. Hannah's tail as a distraction yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was crazy because when we were all given our evidence in court it was there was 27 charges now in total um that that um the lord advocate well, our advocate wanted them to hear the jury to hear the evidence for all 27 charges but obviously to try and get a conviction for 27 charges, that's like never going to happen. It's too many. So it does then get kind of diluted down. So then it was 19, 19. I think, at the end. Um, so then they had to go away and deliberate about the 19 charges that were left. Um, and out of the 19, 12 he was found guilty of and the rest were not proven. So that has given us all a bit of relief of thinking there is not one single charge against him that that jury thought he's innocent of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just, the not proven has been a bit tricky, a hard pill to swallow because it's like, because they basically say it's just that they don't, it's not that they don't believe you, it's that there's maybe just not enough evidence to prove it. There's not enough beyond a reasonable doubt. Yeah, and that's hard because mm -hmm. it's like, but we know it happened mm. to us. It is real, it did mm -hmm. happen, and we've had to stand up there in that witness box <laughs> and relive it and share it with this room of strangers and really you're saying you don't think it well for me it felt you're saying it didn't happen when i know that it did so that's hard but we're and just you still need to process that as part of your yeah thinking. yeah but we are just so thankful i don't know how i would have felt or coped if any of them mm -hmm. had said not guilty yeah. do you know mm -hmm. i don't know how that <laughs> would have looked so that is something a Which massive is also thing so there so uncommon the fact that there wasn't a single not guilty yeah within mm -hmm. 19 mm -hmm. charges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have got this, like, the sentence that he's been given, it's so weird for us. Like, we we think it's so we good because we're, so we're like, thank, thank, we're just happy he's in jail. Like, he, that's mm -hmm. where he needs to be. So we know, like, we can sleep at night because he's not, yeah, he's not mm -hmm. hurting anyone mm -hmm. else. We know that we have stopped this horrific pattern of behaviour. However, on the flip side of that, so many people are telling us that's not long enough. Know, that's know, not, and it's because of the under twenty five guidelines, uh -huh. which is what we're some part of what we want so, to advocate yes. about. So I want to move on to that. The, so you've had your, you've got your verdict, yeah, um, and your sentencing, and yeah, I was that was something that struck me for the list of you know crimes that had been mm -hmm. committed nine and a half years, yeah. and we don't know how long what, how long he will serve off that, yeah. And, whatever so that's the answer to that question we don't know but moving forward then for you I found you from Twitter you went public and it's still yeah. very early days mm -hmm. what is it that you want to achieve what are you thinking and I know you might not even have a definitive answer to this but in your mind what are you thinking is how you want this to so we've got we've got a, a long list of things. We have sat down. But we know that Rome isn't built wasn't built in a day, mm -hmm. you know. We have sat down, we've come together and trying to be make sure we're all on the same page of what is it we've went public for? Why are we doing this? What are we wanting what change do we want to see? And like the main something I feel really passionately about is like there needs to be more guidelines or and stricter guidelines of what defence lawyers can say to a witness, uh, like a victim, in the witness box because it's absolutely disgusting um, what they get away with saying to you. Like all of us, it, it was just, it was horrible and there was no intervention from anyone in that room. Um, and like, I just don't know how they can get away with that. Like, I don't think that's fair. Like this, the, like telling us we're lying, we're making it up. Like that didn't happen. Just denying your reality. And there was a point on the stand where I actually said to the defence lawyer, I'm not going to stand here for a second longer and let you continue to deny my reality like your client did to me for almost two years of my life. Like, I've come too far to go back to that place. Like, I'm not going to let you deny what is the truth. Like, that mm -hmm. did happen to me. Stop telling mm -hmm. me it didn't. Because it is, it's, you're left feeling like you're fighting for your life on that stand. And it should not be like that. Like, yeah, like Jennifer said, it is innocent until proven guilty. 
but you're made to feel like you're the one in the wrong, mm -hmm. that you've done mm -hmm. something wrong. And I'm sit standing there thinking, this doesn't feel like real life. Like, mm -hmm. it's not what I, I don't know what I thought it was going to be like, but it definitely wasn't how it ended up being. I didn't think it mm -hmm. was so brutal, yeah. the way that, that you were treated. You were almost mm -hmm. treated like you were, you were the perpetrator. You, all we heard this whole time was about his right. So I had a video yeah. link because I didn't go in. And he could see me because that that was his right. Like it was his right to be able to see me. And this whole time again, we were just treated like we were the ones that had to prove that we weren't guilty. Um, so yeah, I think definitely. And then we were also so, told that we weren't, because he was in open court. So we were all closed because it was us. And then he was open court, but we were told we, it wouldn't look good. If we went if we to went watch to him his. on the stand and his mum took the stand. But he. But we were not allowed to go. We could have, it was open to the public. But we're we were advised, do not go, it doesn't look good. So for again, that was something taken away from us. Mm -hmm. so we wanted to go, we wanted And to even for the verdict, for say. as well, hearing the verdict, going through each charge, we could have been there, but we were told again, doesn't look good. What? So that's something that mm. we really wanted to see as well for us. We visually feel like we needed to see yeah, him. for our closure. Like, and taken away and actually hear him be found guilty. But that we didn't was, get that. That was something that we really, really wanted, just to kind of close that chapter on like court and things like that. But I never we didn't that. get that. And again, we we sent out an email to the judge um, asking for, for him to be present yeah. and, at sentencing so we could visually see him and again, he away. wasn't there because yeah. he was going to he was video linked we were told right. it was going it was, to be video linked yeah we didn't get a reason as to why it was just mm -hmm. that's that and we're not elaborating further. so again Did it was he... ripped away from us again yeah. like that that we mm -hmm. needed to see it like mm -hmm. to for our the start of our like healing and the closure of it as actually seen it. Believe it too. yeah we're still very much in denial that he's actually in jail just now like it's, it's a very hard concept in your head to like every time we do something we're like because the verdict we were just given over the phone in an email mm -hmm. like we didn't get to whereas I, I feel like if we'd been sitting there and heard the jury go through each charge and what they'd said we, that would have been enough yeah. but we weren't allowed to do that and then again at sentencing not actually ha having him physically there in the room and then being able to as Hannah said see him being walked away in handcuffs we didn't get that so I mean, luckily we were allowed to go to sentencing. Don't think anyone was going to stop us. Anyway. No. Going to mm -hmm. that. Um, although was we... he there for sentencing? No, no, video no video video. sorry. And but he was there for the, ve the, the verdict. Yeah. Aye, right. But, we yeah. but you weren't there for the verdict. We no. Right. Well, we could, but it just wouldn't look good on the uh, grounds. Yeah, that was the advice you were given. And yeah. again, that's something that you're going to have to work through. And, the, and forward. so that's another thing we're wanting to like um, advocate for is the whole justice system needs to be more victim centred so they're just some examples we've given where it feels more in favour of the accused than the victims and that's absolutely not okay like I don't know how anyone is allowing that to happen um, so, so you're campaigning for that a change in the justice system yes, for, for more victim centred mm -hmm. and clearer guidelines on what the defence lawyers can say to you and what they cannot say also to you. Also the under 25 thing. Yes, yes. Yeah. Under, I That's only horrible. read about that this morning. I had no That's idea. So, so yeah. a crime convicted, convicted by an under 25 under the current system is not viewed in the same way as an over 25. Okay. No. And they're, um, I think we they're, all said that we completely understand for things like the under 25 rule and guidelines for like petty theft, things Do like you that. Ask? But not for such heinous crimes like rape and murder. Because the main idea behind the under 25 guidelines is that they're not wanting young perpetrators to be stuck in the cycle of you go to jail, you come out, you re-offend. So we get that cycle. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to go for rehabilitation instead. So not putting them in, like, a not doing jail sentence. We, we do get it for, mm -hmm. as you've said, 100%. other crimes. But I'm sorry, when it comes to this, there needs to be, di like, a different a view diff on it. Yeah. Like, a different... Because our... Hannah made a good point the other, the other night that 16 years old in this country you can consent to sex therefore you understand what sex is yeah. you understand what consent is and you understand that consent sex without consent is right and he is so he why can't you be punished for it yeah he first attacked when he was 15 and then they carried out the rest of the attacks when he was right. 16 he knows yes or no he, yeah. he can he can hear yes or no so it just baffles me as to how they can be treated like a youth, essentially. And the fact the that it wasn't system. a one-off 
this yeah. was a he's a serial abuser and rapist mm, yeah. and it's just it's just a continuing pattern of what he done and that was going to continue you don't just mm. wake up on your 25th birthday and are like, and I know everything. I'm what changed. Yeah. I'm changed. Changed. I know exactly right from mm -hmm. what, like, can't do this anymore. I'm rehabilitated mm -hmm. now. And yeah. someone mm -hmm. on Twitter said to us, like, if it had been in England, he would have got, like, 32 years. So, obviously, then, for us, we were, like, thinking nine and a half years. Oh, like, that's, that's like, almost ten. That's so yeah. good, you know, because there were times where we mm -hmm. thought he's only going to get, like, two, three years or I don't know. Um, I remember saying to you in sentencing because we sat, so we sat front row. You turned around and said to me, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah." I was like the way his, the way his defence were making talking, out, so yeah. that he, he settled into prison life well. very well. He accommodated very well to prison life, and he's putting his education first. Um, and that he is going to work closely with social work. He's agreeing to engage in any rehabilitation offered, and then at that point, in like on cue, breath. Logan started nodding like yeah. a wee dog. But then in the same breath, his lawyer stood up and were like. He doesn't actually accept any wrongdoing and no. still thinks they're out to get him. Like, so how can you yeah. rehabilitate mm. someone that doesn't mm. understand mm. they've done something That's wrong in the first place? That's when I said to mm -hmm. you, he's only going to get like four yeah. years. Like, what what has this actually been for? And it was mm. so interesting. Like as Hannah said, we were we were all sitting the four of us. Um, front row at sentencing, hand in hand. It was quite a, it was quite a powerful moment, I think. And then, Steel magnolias. <laughs> and then right, Lauren was sitting curious. beside me, and then my mum and my dad. And then there was like a space, like no seats. And then Logan's family. The, there was two police officers in the room at sentencing. One came over. Sorry, I'm going to have to ask four of you to move. I looked at them. No, nope, absolutely not. <laughs> we are the survivors. We're not moving. And I was like, Why are you asking us to move? And he was like, because just because it's a bit too close. To, and I was like, well, none of us are moving. And he just was looking at me. And then my mum and my dad were like, right, we'll move. And I was so annoyed because I was like, mm -hmm. again, it it's feels like it's in favour mm -hmm. in protecting mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. and his family. Obviously, his family have done nothing wrong. However, they should have moved. Like, why mm -hmm. are you asking us to move? And one of the journalists that were in the room that day at sentencing messaged us on Twitter later once we'd went public and messaged me saying, I heard you say that to the police and I've never heard that before. That was <laughs> outstanding. He was like, why should you be asked to move though? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, there's just so much, so many things that are, that need to change. And you also know? just mm -hmm. like a further education for society to understand what this abuse whole, can be like and, and be more whole... trauma informed because nobody seems yeah. to get it. And like, even in court, they should all undergo trauma training because I felt like I was trying to educate this man, this defence lawyer, about trauma and how it can look for mm -hmm. people. Yeah. And it just was absolutely ridiculous. A waste of my time, a waste mm -hmm. of my breath. Mm -hmm. But even like the black education society, all these ones that go yeah. on about, yeah. oh, there was false accusation this, 3%. Yeah, false mm -hmm. rape yeah. allegations mm -hmm. are 3%. 3%. Yeah. But mm -hmm. people, the scaremongering it about it, it's it's people think it's so, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. much bigger. Mm -hmm. But also with mm -hmm. the police, there needs to be a clearer process on how you report. Oh well, well how you report how you're treated when you report consistent so we know um that there's a, a conference next week um where the police police scotland are wanting to create a more consistent approach to when they're taking um reports about abuse or rape and i'm thinking we're in 2023 rape and abuse are not a new thing yeah. how are you mm -hmm. just now coming together to make sure there's a consistent approach because all five of us had a very different experience of when we first gave, like when we reported it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. of our experiences were so different because we were at a different police station, mm -hmm. a different mm -hmm. police officer. But it's mm -hmm. the fact there used to be guidelines and there used to be programmes and there used to be X amount of cops on shift that were trauma informed and whatnot. So what's happened? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like so you want back, to get like back it's, it's not yeah, new. to that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So moving forward then, I know you don't know and I've asked this already, but it's just to kind of, I want to mind, kind of put a message out there for anybody that maybe wants to report, wants mm. to speak to somebody about it or whatever. Are you going to set up any kind of group? So we have spoke about, we were, well, we were going to do like a podcast um, and that was just a way to like try and engage with audiences to just feel validated and yeah, listened to. Your own podcast. But I don't mm. know about, I don't know, we've not actually spoken. We've not elaborated really further on that, but I do think we all want, we had our safe space and that was our mm -hmm. group chat. We want to somehow create, create a safe a space, space, yeah. like a safe mm -hmm. space for other people to maybe come forward and share their experiences and confidence, maybe ask advice on like trying to navigate 
mm -hmm. the map that is the justice system. And we would be happy to help, but, but we don't have all the DMs are yeah. open. Yeah, 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 just, oh, yeah and that yeah, is just yeah. what I was yeah. going to say as like, well. We don't have all the answers, but we would obviously be more than happy to help. But you're to as much as you can. And I know there's another girl, a name escapes me right now, a public. Oh, no, another girl. No, another girl who has also been a victim uh, she is, I'm sure, a qualified lawyer. Ellie but was Wilson. Yes. Yeah. So I'm actually anyway. friends with her. Yes. Yeah. I, can, I followed yeah. her on Instagram. Mm. I know that she's been offering guidance and support yeah. as well. So, mm. um, And like, actually in the future we're going to be, we're in early talks about the now, but in the future we are going to be working with Ellie um, to be doing something um, where media. it's going to be kind of showing kind of comparing and showing like how it was going through it the justice system as a group and how she was on her own and mm -hmm. then also talking about the aftermath going public when you're on your own going public yeah. when you're in a group mm -hmm. and just kind of showing the differences and trying to see if we can help other people out there relate to either yeah. of our yeah. I think stories. that's the and one the... thing we've always said is not if you're sent at home you're not going to relate to every single survivor out there but you yeah. will relate to at least one, one. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So you're, to wrap it up then, your DMs are all open yep, yep. just now. I will um, tag you all, I'll collaborate with you, Hannah, I'll tag um, the girl who I invited but's not here, yeah, Holly, Holly, will I tag yeah, her yeah, as yeah, well? Yeah. Yeah. Um, your DMs are open for anybody Absolutely, that needs yeah. any kind of support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or just, advice. Yep. yeah you're all on Twitter as well, mm -hmm. which is how I found you. Yeah. I can't thank you enough for coming to share your story. I feel really emotional <laughs> about it, so I can only imagine how it felt. Thank you. For yeah, you thank you for having us. You're thank so you. welcome. Yeah. And yeah, I wish you all the luck with <laughs> everything that you're doing in the future. Thank you.